Today we're talking about the possibility of life on Venus. Hey everybody, Nick from Just Nass Science, and this was a pretty big week as far as science goes. We talked about it at length on our podcast episode that we published on Tuesday. We have the link in the description if you're interested, but if you just want to catch the highlights, you're in the right spot. So scientists have discovered a gas. I don't know if it's pronounced phosphine or phosphine. It's probably phosphine because phosphine is something else, but you know, what do I know? This gas on Earth is made from microbial bioproduction and it's also made from geochemistry and it's also made from human manufacturing. It's a byproduct of manufacturing. But to our knowledge, there's no geochemistry that would result in phosphine production and there's no manufacturing going on on Venus that we know of. So... The only option left is microbial bioproduction. There's some biosynthesis of this molecule occurring, which is exciting because that means there's some other form of life. But what we really talked about on the podcast was, is alien life similar to what we'd find on Earth? Are aliens like humans? The answer is probably not. You have to consider the environment that the alien or whatever life form is growing in or evolving in if there's no pressure to have a specific trait then that trait isn't going to develop when we talk about pressure we talk about natural pressure or natural selection a lot of people get this wrong they, they cite the example if humans evolve from monkeys then why are there still monkeys and the answer to that is because the end goal is to not become human that's not why things evolve Evolutions occur to make something better at its current environment. It's more fit. When we talk about physical fitness, it's not necessarily the biggest or the strongest that survive. It's the one that's most qualified or most able to live and survive in a particular environment. So that's what we define as evolutionary fitness. The environment on Venus is extremely different than what you find on Earth. For example, at the surface... Venus has temperatures of over 700 degrees Fahrenheit and the pressure that someone would feel is 90 times stronger than what it is on Earth. To give you an example, if you were to stand on Venus, it would feel as if you are 3,000 feet below sea level. The pressure is that strong. So it's not surprising that any life forms that exist wouldn't be like us. We have, we have blood. Most of our blood is water. Well, at 700 degrees, that blood is going to instantly evaporate. You, you'll cease to exist. Other life forms probably won't have blood containing water. It's things like that. They might not have limb orientations the way we might. They might not stand straight up with two arms and two legs and fingers. And When we describe aliens or when we portray aliens in media and art, the aliens are almost always humanoid. And... The reality is they probably won't be. Why Why would they be? It's really egocentric to think that everything else in the universe that's intelligent must be shaped similar to humans. This is not to say that aliens couldn't have anatomy that's similar to humans, but there's no reason to suggest that they would. I'm always interested when people tell alien stories of their own when they they encountered something that they can't explain and recently the department of defense i believe it was in april of 2020 came out with a statement regarding some navy footage that was captured about these unidentified objects and yeah we don't really know what they are they claim that they were not of this earth and so are they alien are they artifacts that we just don't know what they are uh, who who knows but it's interesting to hear alien stories alien stories have a tendency to be really similar and i'm not saying this to discount or discredit anybody's story i wasn't there so i don't know what happened what i do know is that a lot of these stories are really similar there was some flying craft and then a big light person got lifted up off the ground and next thing you know, they were being probed and they were dropped off hours later, days later, whatever it was, in some field in the middle of America. 
why is it always the same story? Is it because that's what's actually happening to these individuals? Or because that's what we're told is happening in media and movies and all this kind of stuff. And so that's how we think aliens should be. And when we tell stories, well, that's how it must be because that's how all the other stories are. Alien stories aside, this is not the first time that scientists have claimed that there may be life on another planet. Europa, which is a moon of Jupiter, and Mars are both believed to have some type of life on it, though it's probably not the exciting Independence Day kind of life, and it's more likely bacteria that we see in Venus. The authors of the study do want to be clear that the production of phosphine gas is not definitive for life. There could be some geochemistry that's resulting in the production of this gas that we just don't know of, either because we don't know that this reaction produces phosphine gas, or because we don't know that Venus actually has the capabilities to make it. So just because we see this gas doesn't necessarily mean there's life, but to our knowledge, nothing else can be producing it, so we kind of rule things out until we're left with one possible explanation. And that's extremely common in science, is you rule out everything else until only one thing makes sense. That's going to do it for us today. I wanted to keep this video short, just kind of gives the, the big news that we know about, and who knows, maybe in a year, five years, ten years, we'll have definitive answers. But for now, that's everything. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let us know in the comments, do you think there's life on other planets? What will it look like? Will we ever be able to interact with another extraterrestrial species? I want to know what you think. Let us know in the comments or on social media. You can find all of our links to our social media website and podcast in the description below. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.